Hi there, this is a short video just to introduce you to a tool I've recently discovered called Chainforge. So there's this big temptation to compare Chainforge with um, Flowwise and also um, Langflow. So which is not really a fair comparison seeing that Flowwise and Langflow are both based on Langchain. So they are no code, low code environments, uh, integrated development environment that's based on the pro code Langchain environment. So obviously Flowwise and um, um, Langflow has got things like agents, uh, more advanced chaining, um, embedding, embeddings you can make use of, which is not within Chainforge. Um, Chainforge is still a very interesting product. Um, I've got it open here in front of me. Um, I think according to GitHub, uh, the GitHub page for Chainforge, the objective was to have an environment where you can test prompts um, and test different prompts against um, different uh, large language models or test a, a prompt multiple times against a large language model and then look at the, the differences. I'll add a, a, a link in the comments, but I published the article on Chainforge on Medium. So as I said, I'll add that link. Um, I look at the basic principles of, of, of learning of Chainforge, the, uh, the pillars. Um, I look at especially the visualization and what improvements I think can be made to Chainforge in the in the short term. And I also look at a few installation considerations um, if you want to install and run um, Chainforge locally. So obviously the Chainforge GitHub um, page is a very good resource to, to look at. So it gives you some instructions. It says that Chainforge is built on React Flow and, and Flask. Um, basically, you can install Chainflow with only these two, two commands. Um, there are some complications if you want to install on Mac, Mac OS, but that I cover in the Medium post. And then it's basically an overview of the features. The features, sorry. And then there's also a very brief uh, user guide uh, for Chainforge, how to use it. Looking at a few, just three actually practical examples, and these examples come comes with the install of, of Chainforge. So you'll see there are basically um, only seven design affordances or uh, design or development components or nodes, whatever you want to call it, within um, Chainforge, um, which is um, quite small compared, obviously, to Flowwise and, and Langflow. But as I said, it's, it's totally different products. You can also export and import your applications and exchange an application or a flow in, a, in an ASCII format. So this first of three examples I'll show you, we've got a text field input here. It's got three names of, of, of three people. And then I've got a prompt note saying for what are these individuals known for? Now you can see, you'll see here that I can um, link these uh, text fields to the prompt node. So if I add another node or an, an, another variable um, or placeholder to this temple, uh, the template, you'll see that an, uh, another connection point shows up in this node to which um, one can connect. So that's something I found quite interesting, um, the way it guides you in some detail. And if I remove that placeholder or variable, um, then also that connection disappears. So there's, there's some um, finer nuances I found quite interesting. So now I can run this, this prompt against these two um, large language models, and I'll just change my, the number of responses per prompt to one. Um, and then I can just run or send this request to the large language model. And you can see the request is currently running. Once the, the prompt node has run, you get this tick mark. Um, and we've got two connectors flowing out from this prompt node. 
the first is the the responses so you can have a detailed response um based on um what the feedback is from each model so in this instance we're grouping the response according to a large language model we've got gpt 3.5 turbo at the top here and at the bottom we've got um gpt4 um with the detailed response you know if it's hard to digest this response there's also a python evaluation node which you can use to manipulate the data and get a more visual representation so if i run this python python evaluator node you see that it returns the the length of of feedback for each of these entrepreneurs um, and i get a visual representation of what the different what the responses of the different uh, models based on these entrepreneurs something i find interesting is that gpt4 has got more responses for naval and steve jobs um, and it's the inverse seemingly for elon musk um, but that's just a, a non-scientific observation in the second example the input data is um, via a CSV node. So you can see it's a common delimited list of devices, chainsaw, light bulb, coffee maker. And then we have a prompt here asking who invented this tool. In this instance, we make, we're making use of, of GPT 3.5. Um, and then we've got a prompt node that instructs a large language model to return only a comma separated list of named entities that appear in the following text um, so there's a good example of prompt chaining and this last prompt is really something to a prompt that will format and uh, change the or do some data transformation um, again we've got an inspect node just where we can um, look at the, the response and you can see for each of those um, for, for each of the different um, devices or inventions we've got a, a group of names associated with that device again we've got a python uh, evaluator node so um, this python node can really become very complex and detailed depending on what type of data analysis you want to perform and then again we've got a number of entities and responses so here you can see the different um, items invented and you can see the number of of entities or names associated with that device um, and you can hover over it and, and get more information on this this last example i found quite interesting um, there's also standard comes with um, with chain forge so you've got a, a set uh, a text node and you've got a set of example a set of commands uh, you want to run against the um, sequentially against the large language model and we've got um, different prompts that are really um, malicious um, test malicious um, prompts we'll pass through so we'll pass through a command and we'll pass through the inputs you can see the the commands are connected here and the inputs are connected here and at the bottom we've got different query uh, models we'll query i'll delete palm and claude because i only have an api for open ai um, and by clicking here this this node will run and then after that node is run you can click the evaluator to give a breakdown of of the responses and where where the, the the injection seemed to have been successful so what this um, python example does if it picks up the word the, the letters lol or it picks up a short response um, it returns true uh, true that the injection was successful or false the injection was not successful and if i run this command um, against um, open ai and i run the the python portion so you'll here you see that 
um, the in injection seemingly was only successful against GPT 3.5 Turbo with 10 examples. And this is, these are the cases where the injection failed false. And you'll see that um, GPT-4 was um, more successful in detecting those injection attempts.